Let me begin by saying that, again, I've said this before, I'd certainly say it again here today. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to all the citizens of Japan, especially those uh, families of the thousands of uh, disaster victims and those that are, that are in, uh, going through a very, very difficult time. As this uh, tragedy unfolds, I encourage the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and other U.S. agencies to continue to coordinate with the Japanese government to provide any assistance that they need to recover. And the events that struck Japan are reminders that we are all vulnerable to unexpected disasters, whether it's an act of nature or a terrorist attack. While we cannot predict uh, when or where the next uh, major disaster will occur, we know that it will occur, and we also know that uh, adequate protection, adequate pre pre preparation and response planning are vital to minimize uh, both the injury and death when it, when it does happen. Today's hearing is one of many I hope that this committee will have to make sure that our nation has prepared for the worst in order to prevent any lives lost from nuclear power in this country. In the United States, we have, as you know, 104 nuclear power plants in some 31 states, which generate approximately a fifth of our nation's total electric consumption. Nuclear power has helped to uh, curb our reliance on dirty fossil fuels and reduce air pollution that damages our health and causes global warming. Over the years, the, uh, the NRC has strived to create a culture of safety in the nuclear energy industry, and as long as I've been on this uh, subcommittee, we've worked very hard to reinforce those, uh, those efforts. As a result, we have seen, uh, not seen any direct deaths from nuclear power, plant radiation exposure in this country in over uh, 50 years. Um, as part of this culture of safety, the NRC requires nuclear facilities to be designed to withstand natural disasters and terrorist attacks. After September 11th, the NRC took a closer look at the nuclear industry, put in place additional safety and security requirements. Despite all the protections that are in place, the crisis in Japan is a clear warning, clear reminder that we cannot become complacent when it comes to nuclear safety. I often say, as my colleagues are tired of hearing me say, um, if it isn't perfect, make it better. And that certainly applies to uh, nuclear plants and, uh, and, and the way that they are, uh, they are operating and, and with respect to their safety. Uh, and that's why Chairman Boxer and I asked the NRC for a comprehensive review of our nuclear fleet. We wanted to make sure, we want to make sure that every precaution is being taken to safeguard the American people from a similar nuclear accident. The NRC is just getting started on this review and I anxiously await uh, their results. Uh, today, I look forward to hearing from our witnesses an update on Fukushima Daiichi uh, nuclear plant and update on our response to that crisis. I also look forward to hearing what we can learn from the ongoing crisis in order to prevent similar events from occurring right here. I'm particularly interested in hearing about the state of emergency planning process from the Delaware Department of Safety and Homeland Security, uh, Secretary Shalero. We welcome him especially. And as chairman of the Subcommittee on Nuclear Safety, I take seriously my responsibilities, our responsibilities, to make certain that we are taking the appropriate measures to make the uh, nuclear industry as safe as they can possibly be. And as I said uh, before, while I'm a proponent of clean energy, my top priority of our domestic power uh, and uh, nuclear uh, power industry remains public safety. 